Hello everyone, my name is Kitetsu and welcome back to my channel. So the countdown now for the Malign Portents reveal is down to the last two days and I'm surprised I haven't had time to uh, make a video on this until now, basically fairly near the end of the countdown, but basically we have now had all of the different omens or portents be revealed to us starting with I think it was the field and ending with the valley. I know a lot of people were having a lot of fun trying to decipher what all of these different portents mean and I believe it was on Facebook they said basically people need to stop taking them so literally because all of the fanciful theories that people are coming up with are maybe going a little bit too in depth and overthinking it and yeah basically here they all are on the screen now the kind of key image I guess from each of the videos the first one was the field the second one I think was called the ship then we had the icon the falling star the village the asylum and finally we have the valley now these are very cryptic and there's not a lot of information as to what all of these things are last month in white dwarf we were promised that next month we would see something about malign portents and I assumed that it would be the big reveal however that copy of White Dwarf has been leaked onto the internet and what we actually got in there was two short stories giving us a bit more of a hint as to what we can expect with the malign portents and they have put so much hype into malign portents that I really hope they can deliver. I have a few slight concerns with the reveal and the release in terms of the fact that they've just released all of this amazing Nurgle stuff which is absolutely incredible and I love everything they've released. Can't wait to get it all but that release was huge in my opinion and there was very little fanfare for it they kind of did the uh, Christmas song and then over the next seven days release in a bit more detail each of those units whereas here they've been talking about this for months and no one has a clue what it is yet everyone is predicting that it's going to be a major relaunch for the uh, death grand alliance and I really hope that's what we're going to have here but I guess time will tell and we just have to wait and see. So basically in this video I'm going to summarise the two short stories that were leaked in the new White Dwarf. And I think each of these pictures is going to relate to basically a short story of some description or another. Especially looking at the uh, field when we uh, go over the first short story which is literally about a field and it even I believe it even has like a sun rising which has a skull in the sun and there's crows in it and basically there's a lot of things in that first image although it's night time in this one and in the story it's kind of sunrise I think it's too much of a coincidence the similarities between this picture and the short story basically we've got all of these hints and obviously it is telling us that this is going to massively involve death in one way or another. We know that without a shadow of a doubt. But in terms of the actual reveal or what we can expect in terms of figures, we don't really know. I don't know how much you've all kept up to date with the lore of Age of Sigmar, but basically where things stand at the moment is that the realms have entered a kind of period of kind of relative peace and stability compared to where they were in the realm gate wars and it's actually giving us a lot of scope for kind of like the fantasy style warhammer to come back rather than these great epic narratives and i'm quite excited for that we've got these cities reappearing we've got villages we've got settlements it was actually really nice to read these two short stories yeah basically it just feels like a return to that kind of more fantasy setting. I like it when they kind of focus on fleshing out these worlds and the people within them to the point where it feels more real. So I'm gonna leave this first image here, which is from the field with the skull in the moon and the crow. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna summarize the first story 
from the White Dwarf article. It's called Sinister Omens, and it starts off with, I believe this is pronounced Petru Van Harrow. So he's a very poor farmer, sleeping rough, and literally he sleeps in the stable, or at least that's what it sounds like, lying in the hay. He's got his wife, Edra. He's covered in flea bites. Their blankets are threadbare. He does back-breaking work, really difficult stuff, harvesting crops all day, every day, from sunrise till sunset. And more or less 90% of all of the harvest goes to the hill tribes, who are these kind of tyrants and savages who rule over the area. Now, you also have the plains, which are nearby, where you have cannibalistic riders. So, life is pretty rough for Van Harrow and his family. He gets very little food, just enough to survive, and I think the only reason he is being kept alive in the first place is for the hill tribes to basically use him as a source of food. But on the particular morning that this story is set, he wakes up, and usually he would wake up before his morning alarm, which is basically a cockerel and this day that damn bird is silent okay so something is clearly amiss <laughs> and I think even the stables there's no noise coming from it the horses are quiet something is clearly wrong as he's sitting in his house all of a sudden something thuds on the roof then it happens again and again and he looks out of his window and basically he finds loads of dead crows scattered about the field outside his house and here you go we've already got our first reference to the field okay so this whole story is basically about a field and that's why i think these narratives are tied to each of these images um as he goes outside to investigate he realizes there is something wrong with the sun the lighting is wrong it's got like a kind of purple eerie glow and when he blinks, he gets like an after image. You know when you like look at a really bright light and you blink and you get kind of like that after image seared into the back of your eye? He's got that and when he blinks, he is seeing a skull. So it's like the sun has got a giant skull in it, which is just like the picture with the moon and the skull. He just gets the thought in the back of his mind that the skull is of a dead king. So perhaps Nagash, for example. That seems to be a bit of a theme with uh, death in general, is that sometimes you don't hear or directly see things as they are just put into the back of your mind. Anyway, he goes up and uh, investigates the crows, which are lying dead in his field, and they are all bleeding out of their eye sockets. There's an unnatural breeze making his hair stand on end, and he goes to check his crops because he suddenly panics and thinks, oh dear, is there some sort of disease? When he breaks apart the like the heads of the wheat for his crops, they are all full of human teeth, which is particularly pleasant. He runs back to his house, kind of tripping over these white things protruding from the ground, which later turn out to be skulls. I think he looks in the stables as he's running into the house and he sees that both of his horses are dead and they're rotting. He's trying to wake up his wife, Edra, but she won't, like, she won't wake up. She's literally just almost comatose. He's shaking her, he's shouting her name, nothing. He hears a noise outside. I think it said it was like a scraping noise. So he runs out there to find out what it is and all of the white things, which I said were the skulls, are basically popping out the ground and the skeletons are all rising up. And at this point he thinks, okay, I'm going to die. Like, there are hundreds and hundreds of skeletons just rising out of the ground in the field. The skeletons, although they've seen him, they don't seem to particularly care. They turn around and they all start wandering off towards the east. At that point, his wife kind of comes out of the house. She doesn't really say anything, but she just hands him his scythe, like his farming tool. Basically, the story ends with him charging off to go and attack the undead. I don't think it takes too much imagination to find out what is going to happen to Van Harrow. <laughs> but yeah, that was the first story. That was Sinister Omens. It was a cool story. It was interesting. It's a good read. It's well written. 
I think it's uh, pretty fun that they've put something like this in a White Dwarf magazine, and I would definitely like to see more of it. The second story is, I think this one is more about linking the latest Nurgle release into the Malign Portents, because obviously we've got these two massive releases which seem to be coming out very close to each other, and I think they just wanted to tie those together. But this story was called The Cycle Interrupted, and it basically focuses on Horticulous Slimux, who is obviously the new release from the Nurgle Demon set that came with the Blight War box. And I don't know if you know, but he is now going to be available for purchase separately, which is pretty cool. Basically, Horticulous has just destroyed an old town, and he is chasing down the survivors. He is trying to drive them onto some plains and fields so that he can basically massacre them there. It's quite cool because they reference Neve, Black Talon. He's basically relieved that he's now massacring villagers and attacking them instead of trying to deal with uh, Black Talon. It's like he's having a little holiday from her for a minute. The story was really well written again. It's got a lot of the Nurgle humour that you'd come to expect. For example, he realises that his ambition of running down the villagers is probably not going to happen because he's riding a giant slug called Mulch and this thing is so damn slow, it's basically travelling at a walking speed and you've got all these villagers running off ahead of him and yeah, he's trying to chase them down on a slug so obviously that's not really going to go very well. At one point he tries to speed up Mulch and Mulch just kind of rolls his eyes and then it describes how he's doing like a dangerously fast walk. And oh, I don't know, you've got to read it, but the humour is good, especially if you uh, just like the general sort of humour that they're going for with the Nurgle faction. But like in the first story, there's something strange in the air. This time it's the smell of death and something else. So obviously you know it's Nagash again. There's some kind of Nagash influence going on or something to do with the death faction. The really cool thing here is that they actually suggest what the relationship is between Nurgle and Nagash, and it's actually really cool because they basically stand for polar opposite things. Although Nurgle really likes to um, kill people, he actually believes in this Nurgle idea of a cycle of rebirth and regrowth. Like for Nurgle, all things die, but then new things are born, and he basically looks at the undead as a blasphemous curse. It's kind of cool, it's nice to like flesh out this relationship and the backstories, and it tells you that he's been extensively travelling through Shish, which is the realm of death, so it's nice to be, uh, you know, told a little bit about what he's been up to, aside from uh, being chased by Neve Black Talon. But anyway, he reaches the plains and all of his beasts of Nurgle are running back to him and they're in pain, there's something wrong with them, he doesn't know what's going on and he doesn't want to go onto the plains yet because he senses something is wrong. The townspeople, however, are absolutely fine, they're continuing to run away and it seems like the Nurgle demons are just more sensitive to something in the plains, but he can't see anything, like, particularly wrong, so... What he does is he grabs some seeds, which I assume he's got from the Garden of Nurgle, and he throws them onto the ground, expecting, you know, horrible fungi and whatever to start growing. But they fail to grow, they shrivel up, they go black, they don't work, and obviously, being the grand cultivator of Nurgle, he is shocked. Like, what's going on here? He doesn't understand. Something is blocking Nurgle's magic, and... Not even the plague flies that he summons can cross onto the plains. The fleeing people realise that the demons pursuing them have given up and they decide to stop and taunt them. Classic mistake. <laughs> Don't stop, keep running. They should have kept running. We knew something bad was going to happen to them the second they decided to stop and taunt the Nurgle demons. And would you really do that in real life? I mean, come on, people. Horticulus decides he's going to charge. But then Mulch can't cross the plane, it's literally like physically hurting him. The town people mistakenly think that they are safe. One of them decides to fire a bow, which hits Horticulus literally in the heart. Being a powerful demon of Nurgle, it more irritates him than anything else, so he just pulls the arrow out, leaps off Mulch, and decides he's going to step onto the plains to go and fight these people. However, the plane, as he's walking across him, is burning him like it really hurts 
and as he steps onto it, hundreds, maybe thousands of skeletal hands just burst out the ground and try to drag him down underground and that doesn't work because fortunately the seeds he scattered there, which although they failed to grow, they still have a bit of Nurgle's magic in, they protect him from these skeletons. Unfortunately the same can't be said for the townsfolk and they are literally ripped apart and yeah dragged underground. The way it ends is Horticulus is very unfazed by what's just happened. He's thinking oh this is just a bit weird really and he thinks Do you know what I'm just going to go back to the Garden of Nurgle. I've got some stuff there which I know will deal with these pesky undead. I've got a few tricks up my sleeve and he just kind of wanders off and that's the end. You know, the two stories are very cool. They're interesting, they're well written. They're not quite the big reveal I was expecting from this issue of uh, White Dwarf. And at the very end of the White Dwarf magazine, it says, basically, next month, more malign importance. So you think, okay, are we going to get more short stories? We really don't know when this reveal or release is coming out and I assumed it was going to be a January release but now I'm thinking it could be a little bit later. So apart from that we've seen the seven clues, we don't necessarily know what they mean apart from the fact that death is clearly corrupting the land and spreading, Nagash seems to be rising in power. This article here was revealed a while back and it showed the new fungoid cave shaman but the thing I thought was interesting from this article is that it says at the top that champions are rising from each grand alliance to lead their forces in great battles to come. For death, we have the Knight of Shrouds. For chaos, we have the Dark Oath War Queen. And for destruction, we have the Fungoid Cave Shaman. What I thought was interesting there is what exactly is this release going to be? Because at the moment, they're kind of just saying, oh, we're going to have four new champions or that's what it makes it sound like there's going to be one each for the grand alliances i must admit i find that i find that a bit confusing like when they announced the knight of shrouds i thought okay so they've released a death hero now the next reveal will be another unit of death characters or something like that just more units from the death faction but then they released a chaos hero and then a destruction one and i assume that shortly we're going to see the Order Hero. I don't know, I just found that very interesting and it just seems a little bit strange to me and I'm not quite sure where this reveal or release is heading. I think with the way they have built it up, it has to be something big. I'm hoping for a full proper release of, you know, the Death Faction. It's been needing an update for a long time and you look at the love that the Stormcast have been getting and even the Nurgle Demons now, they've got so many units and options and Everything for death is very dated, it's quite old, and it just needs generally updating. I don't know if they give you too much hint as to what's coming for uh, Malign importance based on the heroes. I mean, the Knight of Shrouds says he's risen to command the Spectral Legions, a shadowy revenant fueled by a cold hatred of the living, and armed with horrific powers drawn from Shish and the Great Necromancer. So clearly we've got Nagash going on here. The Dark Oath War Queen has arisen to split skulls, drink blood, and bond the disparate forces of the Dark Gods in a crusade of carnage. And as for the Fungoid Cave Shaman, he is amongst the greatest seers in the mortal realms. While the other champions in Malign Importance draw their strength from mysterious patronage, ingenuity, training, or providence, the Fungoid Cave Shaman is powered by a liberal attitude towards the consumption of hallucinogenic fungus so he sounds a little bit like skaven with their uh, warp crystal i think it's called yep some grots may have been left as gibbering lunatics the fungoid cave shaman has been granted strange and arcane powers allowing him to predict the dark events to come he is by any sensible measure a gibbering lunatic he's a really nice model i like his sculpt he looks very cool I'm wondering if we're going to see some more kind of green skin releases, but we'll have to wait and see. I think all of the sculpts look really good. I just really don't think they're telling us what to expect. It seems almost like we've had the Realm Gate Wars and now 
the malign portents is the next big campaign that's going to be tearing across the realms and that would be really cool if we had some really big sort of campaign books in the style of the ones we have for the realm gates and they make this into an enormous campaign personally i'm excited i would have preferred them to have done the story of slanesh maybe and maybe done a huge reveal and release of the elves or elves as i guess they're now called but anyway let me know down below what you guys think and the second there's any updates and the second the uh countdown here reaches zero and we get a hint of what this big reveal is i will of course be making another update video but for now please like and subscribe to the video and i will see all of you guys soon